close to 50 billion ringgit in investments realized in Northern Corridor Economic Region. Close cooperation in Tibet and Halal to strengthen ties between Malaysia and the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum Badani. Good evening. I'm Muhammad Amin Carlos and you're watching Malaysia Tonight. Well, the Northern Corridor Economic Region, or NCER, has successfully realized 48.25 billion ringgit in investments during January to September this year, a 60% growth compared to the same period last year. Now, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim, who chaired the 32nd Northern Corridor Implementation Authority, or NCIA, meeting today, said NCER also saw 10,529 new job opportunities created through these realized investments. Well, the Premier said the meeting also discussed initiatives to support the NCER investment ecosystem in line with the NCER Strategic Development Plan 2024-2030, including the development of a technology innovation centre, agro-food hub and energy transition. In a statement, NCIA said that from 2009 to September 2024, Investments totaling 248.42 billion ringgit were successfully realized in NCER, with the manufacturing sector being the largest contributor, followed by tourism, logistics, agriculture and bio-industry, and the digital economy. During the meeting, NCIA also presented four major initiatives aligned with the Madani economy's goals, including the NCER Technology Innovation Center, that is NTIC, the NCER Agri-Food Hub, the Energy Transition Strategy, and the Rare Earth Resource Value Chain. Now, these initiatives will foster private sector cooperation to attract more high-value investments to NCER, driving sustainable economic growth and supporting the development of micro, small and medium enterprises. Well, Women, Family and Community Development Minister Dato Sri Nancy Shukri has disclosed that some individuals have been observed monitoring shelters that house children rescued during Op Global, an operation involving Global Equan Services and Business Holdings, or GISBH. However, the minister stated that her side cannot confirm whether the actions were carried out by the children's parents or otherwise. The minister mentioned that so far they have not allowed parents or guardians of all the children to visit as they are concerned that once this is permitted, it will attract many unrelated individuals, not just the parents of the rescued children. Setakat ini belum lagi ya, belum lagi kerana uh, bila itu dah dibuka, the minute you buka floodgates tu, ianya akan menjadi ramai yang bukan ibu bapa pun akan datang. Uh, sebab kita dapat memahati ada tempat-tempat kita, ada orang yang mengintai di luar sana. Jadi kita tidak tahu ini sama ada ini bapa ke siapa. Jadi kita tak dapat sembarangan. Sebab itu tempat itu dikatakan tempat selamat. Bila kita tempat selamat itu, kita first time, uh, first uh, the first thing that kita perlu buatlah tempat itu mesti perlu betul-betul selamat. Currently, 560 children are residing in these shelters after the Social Welfare Department, or JKM, secured a temporary custody order from the court for a two-month duration. As a result, the ministry has tightened security measures to protect the involved children. She said this when met by the media today. Well, preparedness measures for health personnel to manage incidents involving chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and explosive materials are among the highlights of five new guidelines introduced by the Health Ministry, the MOH, for disaster management in the country. Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmed said these measures were part of the chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and explosives or CBRNE management guidelines 2024, which also includes procedures for risk communication and disaster incident reporting. 
paling penting tujuan asasnya the higher intent atau objektifnya adalah untuk menyediakan uh, negara berdepan dengan apa juga kemungkinan uh, berlakunya ya, bencana sama ada sifatnya itu adalah bencana-bencana yang kita selalu tahu ya, banjir dan uh, pastinya dengan itu pelbagai penyakit seperti lepto, spirosis dan sebagainya itu biasa ya, juga tanah runtuh, ya, landslide uh, tapi yang kita juga mahu menekankan adalah bencana-bencana seumpama di chemical disaster He said this when met at the Disaster Management Conference in conjunction with the MOH Level National Preparedness Month themed Health System Resilience in Disaster. The minister outlined the four additional guidelines including the MOH Disaster Management Plan 2024 which serves as the main framework for developing other guidelines and the Crisis Preparedness and Response Center or CPRC Standard Operating Procedure 2024. Also, the guidelines for Rapid Assessment Team, or RAT, and Rapid Response Team, RRT 2024, as well as the guidelines for human resource mobilization during public health emergencies 2024. On another note, the Health Ministry is examining matters related to labour issues, including the issue of doctors working overtime or being on call for up to 30 hours. Although this issue does not occur widely everywhere, the Ministry is addressing the matter. It's not like a whole uh, everywhere. It, it's, you know, sometimes you know this is why we got to understand the gaps. We got to understand where the shortfalls are, you know, and then we got to give the correct prescription before you know the prescri prescription may not be. Well, the festive season maximum price scheme, or SHMMP, for Dipavali 2024 will be announced soon. And according to Minister of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living, Dato Arumizan Muhammad Ali, the ministry is still in the midst of working with the industry to identify items to be listed in the SHMMP for Dipavali. Tidak lama lagi saya akan mengumumkan. Now, dalam proses kita membuat engagement dengan industri, uh, untuk melihat, mengenal pasti apakah barang-barangan yang sesuai untuk kita masukkan uh, dalam senarai harga, uh, senarai barangan dengan harga kawalan uh, pada musim di Fabali yang akan datang. Okay, once finalized, saya akan umumkan kelak jenis-jenis uh, barangan untuk tahun ini yang kita pilih yang juga mendapat uh, persetujuan daripada industri. He said this when opening the AgroInvest 2024 in conjunction with Mardi Innovation Day today. The SHMMP has been implemented since 2000 under the Price Control and Anti-Profiteering Act 2011. Under the scheme, several types of essential goods have been identified as festive season price control items with maximum prices set at the producer, wholesaler and retailer levels for a specified period. Hindu devotees across the country will be celebrating Dipavali on 31st October. Coming up next, battery-powered EV sales surge 112% in first half of the year. Welcome to On The Table. Uh, obviously, there are two main engines of growth in any economy. What are the implications of latest growth on employment, income levels and also standard of living for population? From a historical perspective, it's been good. The capacity in our country can be built to be in the same level as the world standards. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi stated that close cooperation in the technical and vocational education and training or TVET sector in the halal industry will strengthen the strategic ties between Malaysia and the Philippines while bringing significant benefits to both countries. Now, he made these remarks during his meeting with the Philippines' Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, today, as both sides are optimistic about exploring the potential of TVET and the halal industry in the Republic.
They also agree that TVET education is crucial to ensuring that the younger generation, as well as the existing workforce, are equipped with skills relevant to the current job market needs. The Deputy Prime Minister is confident that through collaboration with TESDA, Malaysia can develop a stronger global halal ecosystem in the Philippines. Dr. Sri Ahmad Zahid is currently in the Philippines for a three-day official visit and to lead the Malaysian delegation to the 10th Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. Well, a total of 6,617 battery-powered electric vehicles, or BEVs, were sold in the first half of 2024, marking a significant 112% year-on-year surge in the electric vehicle, or EV, market. So this moves us closer to our target of having 20% our, of our TIV, or our total industry volume, comprising of EVs by the year 2030. This growth not only signals our consumers' growing interest, but also demonstrates Malaysia's general buy-in uh, to contribute to the national and global environmental agendas. Speaking at the launch of Stellantis X Leap Moto C10 SUV today, Tengku Datu Sri Zafrul said the automotive industry remains a vital pillar of Malaysia's economic growth, contributing an impressive 45% to national GDP annually and supporting over 700,000 jobs. At the event today, Stellantis unveiled its new all-electric SUV, the C10, marking its first major entry into the Southeast Asian market with its launch in Malaysia. The C10 is part of Leap Moto International National, a 51 to 49 joint venture between Stellantis and Leap Moto. Well, Transport Minister Anthony Logue said airlines' applications for the renewal or additional air traffic rights from MAVCOM will be affected if they fail to meet the on-time performance or OTP targets. Now, this measure aims to address flight delays that impact consumers. The Minister in Parliament today commented that the Transport Ministry, through the Malaysian Aviation Commission of MAVCOM, continuously monitors flight delays and cancellations by airlines in Malaysia. Bagi menangani isu kelewatan dan perpadaran ini, MOT dan MAVCOM pada April 2024 telah menetapkan 85% sasaran OTP dan 80% penerbangan yang mematuhi jadual bagi semua syarikat penerbangan Malaysia yang beroperasi dari semua lapangan terbang di Malaysia. From January to August this year, 315,388 flights were scheduled with 258,112 flights operated by Malaysian Airlines. 76% of these flights were on schedule, while 90.2% were delayed by less than two hours and the remainder were delayed by more than two hours. The Ministry of Plantation and Commodities, or KPK, will discuss with the Ministry of Finance, the MOF, to increase the assistance provided in the oil palm replanting grant to boost productivity among smallholders. Now, Minister Dato Sri Johari Abdul Ghani said oil palm replanting among smallholders is very low at only 0.2%, far below the 4% standard that should be implemented yearly. During the question and answer session at the Dewan Raya today, he said smallholders also do not implement systematic replanting programs. Di tahun 2024, kerajaan telah memperuntukkan 100 juta bagi program pembiayaan mudah tanam semula pekebun sawit untuk pekebun-pekebun kecil. Penanaman semula ini lebih memfokuskan kepada program tanam semula sawit bagi pokok sawit yang menua yang telah berumur lebih daripada 25 tahun dan tidak lagi produktif. Replying to a supplementary question, he said to promote replanting, the minister said that the government's focus extends beyond smallholders. At the same time, the government also urges large growers with high-quality seeds to share those seeds with small growers and small-scale estates before exporting. Well, Deputy Minister of Education, the MOE, Wong Kah Wo, said the ministry is planning to expand its hybrid class pilot project to an additional 400 classes next year, aiming to enhance digital skills in selected schools across both urban and rural areas. 
During an oral question and answer session at the Dewan Raya today, he explained that this initiative is part of the MOE's broader effort to foster digital proficiency within the learning ecosystem, which has been implemented in 110 selected educational institutions, including rural schools, aligning with Core 4, empowerment of infrastructure and infrastructure under the national education policy. Ini melibatkan 550 buah kelas pemula pada tahun 2021 dan kelas pintar ini dilengkapi dengan kemudahan peralatan digital seperti smartboard, TV pintar, set kamera, perakam suara dan sebagainya. Pada tahun hadapan 2025, pihak KPM bercadang untuk memperluaskan projek ini kepada 400 buah kelas lagi dan ini termasuk sekolah-sekolah yang terpilih dari bandar dan juga luar bandar. Wong stressed that the ministry assesses students' digital skills through the Digital Competency Score or DCS report. Last year, rural school students achieved an average score of 3.24 out of 5 compared to the national average of 3.31. Well, the Malaysian Investment Development Authority, MIDA, and the Malaysian Technical Universities Network, or MTUN, today formalize a collaboration to bolster Malaysia's high-skilled workforce through the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU. Now, the MOU was inked by MIDA Chief Executive Officer Dato Sikh Samsul Ibrahim Sikh Abdul Majid and Vice Chancellors from four MTUN universities, University Malaysia Perlis, University Tun Hussein On, Malaysia, University Malaysia Pahang Al Sultan Abdullah, and University Technology Malaysia Malacca. In his remarks, Datu Sikh Samsul Ibrahim said that the MOU reflects a shared commitment to enhancing Malaysia's talent pool, particularly in the area of technical and vocational education and training, or TVET. Well, he also highlighted that this collaboration exemplifies the synergy between MIDA and academic institutions, paving the way for a new generation of highly skilled professionals tailored to meet the evolving needs of Malaysia's industrial landscape. Now, leaders from MTUN institutions, meanwhile, echoed similar sentiments, reaffirming their commitment to equipping graduates with industry-relevant skills and ensuring their job readiness. Well, the sudden easing of geopolitical factors has revitalized global stock markets. Now, Malaysia Building Society Burhad, or MBSB's head of investor relations, Azharuddin Nordin, said this situation will restore confidence among investors and encourage foreign fund inflows into the country. He said despite expectations, the local stock market remains cautious this week, driven by investor sentiment ahead of the 2025 budget announcement. Tentang pasaran saham, data tahun-tahun sebelum ini menunjukkan bahawa uh, indeks komposit KL naik sebanyak 0.6% saja. Sewaktu belanjawan dibentangkan. Ya. Uh, minggu ini, Indeks komposit naik 0.5% iaitu sejajar dengan tahun yang sebelum ini dan tidak di luar jangkaan. Meanwhile, the ringgit continues to be the best performing currency in Asia, having recorded a 6.5% increase against the US dollar as of yesterday. However, the dollar is back on an upward trend against most currencies worldwide, including the ringgit. This is driven by economic data from developed countries, which signal positive growth and no risk of recession. Well, infrastructure project flows will dominate Malaysia's construction industry in the coming months as year-to-date OYTD contract flows from the government have exceeded from last year. Now, RHB Investment Bank Burhad or RHB IB in a note today said that government projects awarded in the first nine months of 2024, 9M 2024, stood at 41 billion ringgit, surpassing 36.7 billion ringgit in 2023. Now, RHB IB also believes that water-related infrastructure may bring additional opportunities for contractors. Meanwhile, the value of contracts awarded to non-residential subsectors comprising commercial buildings, factories, warehouses, 
services and data centers to stood at 109 billion ringgit for 9M 2024, exceeding 2023's full year value of 83.5 billion ringgit. So overall, the investment bank maintains its overweight call on the construction and engineering sector. At the same time, it noted that although the Bursa Malaysia Construction Index or BMCI was up by 30% YTD, the sector is not ripe for profit taking as yet. Well, still ahead, Thai Prime Minister launches economic recovery project. Well, Thai Prime Minister Pai Tong Tan Shinawat on Wednesday launched an economic recovery project aimed at reducing expenses, increasing income, and expanding opportunities for small businesses and vulnerable groups. Now, the project, set to run for five months until January 2025, is expected to stimulate the economy by approximately 110 billion baht, which is equivalent to 3.3 billion US dollars, and benefit 95% of small entrepreneurs. Now, speaking at the launch event, the Prime Minister said the initiative follows a previous economic stimulus measure that distributed 10,000 baht to vulnerable groups starting 25th September, which the government claims injected 145.5 billion baht into the economy. The new project comprises three key strategies, and Commerce Minister Pichai Narip Tapan stated that major private sector players have agreed to support smaller businesses as part of the project. Now, he also noted that foreign investment in Thailand has recently surpassed 200 billion baht, signaling growing international interest in the country. Now, the government, he added, emphasized its commitment to implementing short, medium and long-term plans to improve citizens' living conditions. Well, elsewhere in Thailand, the Anti-Money Laundering Office, or the AMLO, has sequestered assets belonging to the Icon Group and its CEO and three top executives worth about 125 million baht for 90 days as a precautionary step to prevent the assets from being transferred, removed or concealed. Now, the move comes amid allegations of fraudulent activities linked to the direct sales company. Now, AMLO's decision to impound the assets of the Icon Group, CEO Warat Paul Warat Vorakul and three others came after the Consumer Protection Division reported its suspects that the online direct marketing company and its top executives had been engaged in a business which had been defrauding the public. Now, the frozen assets are in the form of 11 bank accounts, including current and savings accounts, as well as accounts for shares and digital assets trading. AMLO also warned that any individual who helped the company and the executives to conceal or transfer their assets in an attempt to evade seizure by the authorities may face money laundering charges. Meanwhile, the cabinet discussed the Icon Group issue on Tuesday and instructed the Royal Thai Police and the Office of the Consumer Protection Board to tighten controls on online retail businesses and to educate the public about the nature of the business to prevent them from being cheated by scammers. Coming up in sports, Thomas Tuchel to lead England into next World Cup. Well, England have found their man with Thomas Tuchel becoming the new Three Lions boss, taking over from Gareth Southgate with all eyes on the next World Cup. Now, the Football Association in a statement on Wednesday said Tuchel will be assisted by English coach Anthony Barry, who works alongside him at Bayern Munich. Now, England have found that new manager after months of waiting with Thomas Tuchel, the man to succeed Gareth Southgate. And his contract will last 
until July 2026, starting from January 2025, as per agreed with the Football Association. Now, the 18-month deal will see Tuchel take the three Lions into the next World Cup. Now, he will inherit a richly talented generation of players, including Harry Kane, Jude Bellingham and Cole Palmer, that will be among the favourites for the 2026 World Cup. Tuchel will become the third foreign manager to take charge of England, but the first from Germany. Sweden's Sven Goran Eriksson and Italian Fabio Capello also held the post. Known for his progressive football, Tuchel replaced Frank Lampard at Chelsea in January 2021 and led them to the Champions League title that season, beating Manchester City in the final. Pep Guardiola was touted as an option, but in the end, they've gone for another big-name coach. Well, Argentina's superstar Lionel Messi bagged a hat-trick and provided two assists in a dominant 6-0 win over Bolivia in World Cup qualifiers on Tuesday, while Brazil dominated Peru 4-0. Messi opened the scoring for the Albi Celeste in the 19th minute at the Estadio Monumental in Buenos Aires. Shortly before halftime, Lautaro Martinez increased the lead after a fine counter-attack from Argentina's own half and Julian Alvarez made it 3-0 at halftime. The goal avalanche continued after the break with Thiago Almada scoring the fourth in the 69th minute. But shortly before the end, it was Messi again who scored twice within two minutes. The win puts the side back on track after two games without a win. In Brasilia, Rafinha opened the scoring for the Celestial with two converted penalty kicks. Andreas Pereira scored the third in the 71st minute with a bicycle kick before Luis Henrique made it 4-0 three minutes later. The win on match day 10 means that Brazil remains in fourth place in the qualifying competition for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. The Albi Celeste tops the South American group with 22 points. Brazil will next face Venezuela in mid November, while Argentina will play Paraguay. Well, European champion Spain claimed a place in the Nations League quarterfinals with a 3-0 home win over Serbia, thanks to goals by Aymeric Laporte, Alvaro Morata and Alex Baena. Now, Spain were missing several players from the team that beat England 2-1 in the Euro 2024 final in July, but still outclassed Serbia with 30 shots against three from the visitors. Defender Laporte gave the Spaniards the lead with a close-range header in the fifth minute. Morata, who missed a penalty in the 54th, meanwhile extended Spain's lead with a strike from just inside the box after 65 minutes. Serbia's Strahinja Pavlovic was shown a straight red card for a last man foul on Mikel Oyarzabal on the edge of the area in the 78th minute, and Baena curled a delightful free kick into the top corner to wrap up an easy victory for Spain. With two games left, Spain have secured at least a second place finish as they top League A group four points, or rather the group four with 10 points, three ahead of Denmark and six clear of Serbia. Switzerland are bottom on one point with a two-all home draw with the Danes. Perlawanan Bola Sepa Liga Super 2024. Aksi-aksi dan asakan terus diledakkan dalam setiap pertembungan bagi memburu ruang mendominasi perlawanan. Jumaat 18 Oktober, Kelantan Darul Naim FC bertemu Kuala Lumpur City FC. 8.30 minit malam di saluran OK dan saluran Sukan RTM. Saksikan juga secara penstriman langsung di RTM Click. Well, that's it from us this evening. In a top story, close to 50 billion ringgit in investments realized in Northern Corridor Economic Region. And from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching.